Welcome to the Department of Distance and Continuing Education, University of Delhi. Masters of Business Administration, Semester 1, Code Course, MBA FT 6104, Accounting for Managers. Lesson 1, Accounting Theory. 1.1, Learning Objectives. After reading this chapter, students will be able to understand basic concept of financial accounting, accountancy and bookkeeping, relationship between accountancy, accounting and bookkeeping, difference between bookkeeping and accounting, users of accounting information both internal and external, merits and demerits of accounting, basic accounting terms and concepts, double entry system of bookkeeping, Fundamental Accounting Assumptions and Accounting Principles Accounting Standards and International Financial Reporting Standards and their difference with each other Basis of Accounting Cash versus Accrual 1.2 Introduction As per the definition of accounting given by the AICPA Accounting is an art of recording, classifying and summarizing the transactions and events which are monetary and business related in a significant manner as per accounting rules and principles and interpreting the financial results. Accounting aims to provide quantitative financial information about economic and business entities with respect to their financial position and performance so that users can use the information in making prudent economic decisions. It is a logical and sequential process of identifying, collecting, recording, classifying, summarizing and communicating financial information, monetary transactions and events related to business, to the users for their own customized judgment, analysis and decision making. 1.3 Objectives of Accounting Accounting is done to achieve the following objectives. Number 1. Keeping systematic, accurate, structured and complete records of financial transactions and events in the primary and secondary books of accounts such as journal, ledger as per specified accounting principles, rules, standards, to avoid omission, error and fraud. Number two, calculation of profit earned or loss incurred by a business during a particular accounting period to assess the financial results and operating efficiency of business activities. Number three, determination of financial strength or position of the business through a position statement known as balance sheet which shows the application of funds in the form of current and non-current assets and sources of funds in the form of equity, capital and reserves and surplus and external liabilities. Number four, providing useful accounting information to the users of financial information such as owners, prospective investors, suppliers, banks, employees and government authorities, regulators, customers, etc. who analyze and interpret them as per their own customized requirements such as investors use information for investment decisions, bankers use for assessing creditworthiness to make lending decisions. Number 5. Providing financial information to the management to facilitate them to take decisions regarding expansion, diversification, shutdown, to prepare budgets and forecast the results and financial position so as to prepare projected financial statements. Number six, safeguarding assets and detecting and preventing frauds by maintaining regular and systematic accounting records of the business transactions and events relating to the acquisition and disposal of assets, earning revenue and incurring expenses. 1.4 Merits 
or advantages of accounting. The significance and importance of accounting can be considered through the following points. Number one, provides information to management, facilitating them to make prudent economic decisions. Number two, it helps owners to compare results of current years with the past year results and with the results of other entities in the same industry. It also helps to identify trends and the factors which lead to changes and evaluate the competitive performance. It provides information regarding financial position of the business enterprise through balance sheet which shows the application of funds in the form of assets and sources of funds in the form of capital and external liabilities. Number four, it helps in keeping accounting records in a structured, systematic, accurate and complete manner of business related transactions and events in the books of accounts as per specified generally accepted accounting principles which is accepted by the regulators, authorities and courts as valid evidence to settle various litigations. It helps in correct determination of tax liabilities under various taxes such as income tax, GST and custom duties etc. Number six, it facilitates costing of products, job, activity and project so that proper pricing decision can be taken. 1.5 Limitations of Accounting In spite of many advantages, accounting suffers from many limitations discussed below. Number 1. Historical in nature Accounting is concerned with transactions and events already occurred in the past. It does not provide a tool for future decision making. Further, it does not show the business assets and investments at their current market value as per the demand and supply of the securities in the market or as per the current value prevailing for the assets in the relevant market because it does not take into account the effects of changes in price level. Number two, it ignores qualitative aspects. It accounts and recognizes only transactions and events which can be expressed in terms of money because of money measurement concept. It does not consider qualitative aspects such as efficiency with which the management works, quality of operations, loyalty and sincerity of employees, customer satisfaction level, etc. Number three, it allows scope for window dressing. It might involve manipulations in the accounts to present a favorable or unfavorable results and financial position than its actual position to serve the vested interest of the insiders. Number four, it is subjected to personal bias and judgment. Since different people hold different opinions with respect to accounting estimates such as useful life of the asset to determine the amount of depreciation, provision for doubtful debts on the basis of likelihood of the default by the debtors, etc. Number five, it is based on concepts and conventions. Since accounting is based on concept and conventions which sometimes distort the disclosure of true and realistic financial position and results of a business enterprise. For example, as per historical cost concept, fixed assets in the balance sheet are shown at their purchase cost less depreciation and not at their current market value prevailing in the market if they are sold in the relevant market. 1.6 Bookkeeping Bookkeeping is identification and recording of business transactions and events. It is the recognition component of accounting system which involves the recording of monetary business transactions and events 
in a defined manner as per the accounting standards and principles given in the relevant financial reporting framework. It is concerned with only the recording part whereas accounting covers both recording, summarizing, communicating and interpretation part of an accounting system. The differences between bookkeeping and accounting can be described as under. On the basis of component, bookkeeping is the recording phase involving recording of business transactions and events in general and other accounting books. Accounting is much wider than bookkeeping as it covers recording, summarizing, communication and interpretation part of an accounting system. On the basis of stage of accounting, it is bookkeeping is the first and primary stage and forms basis of accounting. Accounting is the secondary and subsequent stage cover the part where the bookkeeping ends. On the basis of nature or skill or the knowledge requirement, bookkeeping involves activities which are routine and clerical in nature and does not require any specialized skills or knowledge in their application. Accounting involves activities which are analytical in nature and requires specialized skills or knowledge of accounting ratios and other analytical tools. On the basis of level of staff required, bookkeeping is carried out by junior level employees called bookkeepers. Accounting is carried out by senior level employees called accountants on the basis of depiction of financial position. In bookkeeping, financial position and performance cannot be determined on the basis of journal entries. Accounting provides the complete and summarized blueprint of the financial position and performance of an entity. 1.7 Components of Accounting Information or Statements Accounting information comprises of the following components. Number 1. Statement Financial Position The statement of profit or loss in case of companies Profit or loss account income statement in case of corporates shows the net profit earned or loss incurred from the business operations during a particular accounting period which is usually a financial year. Number 2. Information relating to financial position. Balance sheet is a statement which shows the application of funds in the form of assets and sources of funds in the form of capital and external liabilities. Number 3. Schedules and notes to accounts, which forms the part of the balance sheet and statement of profit and loss to give detailed information of various line items shown in the balance sheet and income statement. Significant accounting policies relating to recognition, valuation, classification and disclosures, which are used in the preparation and presentation of financial statement. Number 4. Cash flow statement. It shows the inflows and outflows of cash and cash equivalents from three activities operating, investing and financing. 1.8 Branches of Accounting Accounting can be classified into following subfields. Number 1 Financial Accounting It is that subfield or branch of accounting which is aimed at generating general purpose financial statements covering identification and recording of business transactions and events of financial nature which can be expressed in monetary terms in a systematic and significant manner as per generally accepted accounting principles to ascertain the financial performance results profit earned or loss incurred during the accounting period and to depict the financial position or health of the entity in the form of assets and liabilities. Number 2. Cost Accounting It is concerned with ascertainment or calculation of total cost or per unit cost of object which can be goods produced or services rendered, job work performed or project undertaken. Number 3. Management Accounting 
it involves obtaining financial information to help the management in planning organizing and controlling the operations by setting benchmarks and also facilitates in taking sound business decisions in text questions number 1 select the correct answer for the following multiple choice questions accounting includes one identifying the transactions and events recording the transaction and events classifying and summarizing the transaction and events all of the above none of the above number 2 please indicate if the following statement is true or false a accounting and bookkeeping are same and there is no difference between the two b there is no scope for window dressing in accounting c accounting is subject to personal bias and judgments number 3 financial accounting recognizes only transaction and events which can be expressed in terms of dash number 4 as per dash concept fixed assets in the balance sheet are shown at their purchase cost less depreciation and not at their current market value prevailing in the relevant market if they are sold as such number 5 dash shows the inflows and outflows of cash and cash equivalents from three activities operating investing and financing 1.9 interested users of accounting information and their needs there are various categories of stakeholders or users of financial information which are interested in determining the financial position and financial performance of the business in internal users number 1 owners or proprietors or shareholders the information need of these are return on investment net profit financial position of the company business or go three number 2 management they need information on rate of return from different segments products and investments number 3 employees they need information about profitability of the employer to bargain wage rates bonus dues pf esi etc are being deposited regularly in external users number 1 potential investors they need information about business and financial risk eps future prospects of the business number 2 creditors or suppliers they need information about short term liquidity creditors are interested in knowing financial capability and ability of the business to pay its debts on time number 3 lenders they need information about the repaying capacity credit worthiness short term liquidity and long term solvency number 4 tax authorities assess they need information about assessment of income and expenses tax dues true and fair disclosure of accounting information others they include researchers customers who seek information about different own customized interest and reasons 1.10 qualitative aspects of accounting information usefulness of accounting information for different interested users is determined on the basis of attributes of accounting number 1 reliability financial information must present the actual facts and can be verified through source documents that are vouchers number 2 relevance 
financial information must be readily available on time when it is required for decision making and must play an important role in economic decisions of the users of information by helping them to form nearly correct prediction about the future income and financial position number 3 understandability information should be presented in such a manner such that the users can understand and interpret it with much ease and in a concise manner number 4 comparability information should be presented and disclosed so that it can be compared with the entity's past year figures intra firm comparison and other businesses in the same industry inter firm comparison 1.11 some important accounting terms business transaction it refers to a business activity which involves exchange of money or money's worth between parties buyer and seller it can be measured in terms of money and changes the financial position of an entity example purchase of goods would involve inflow of material and goods that is asset and outflow of cash asset or creating an obligation to pay liability towards the supplier at a future date transaction can be number 1 cash transaction when the parties that is buyer and seller settle the transaction immediately by making payment in cash or by bank number 2 credit transaction when the payment is to be settled at a future date as per the agreement or mutual consent between the parties account it refers to a summarized record of all the transactions relating to a particular item at one place it has two sides debit side and credit side the left side of the account is known as debit side and right side is known as the credit side capital it is the amount of resources invested by the owners into the business organization either in the form of cash or cash equivalents or in kind or assets the amount can be invested in the form of cash goods or any other asset for business entity capital is a liability towards the owner which is to be settled only in the event of closure or transfer of the business in case of corporates it is called as share capital drawings it represents an amount of cash goods or any other assets which the owner withdraws from the business for personal use example if the life insurance premium of the proprietor is paid from the business bank account goods withdrawn for personal use it will result in reduction in the owner's capital asset asset is a resource controlled by the business entity from which probable future economic assets will flow to the entity by using it for generating future profits assets can be tangible and intangible tangible assets are the assets which have some physical existence they can be seen touch and felt such as plant and machinery furniture and fittings land and building books and periodicals computers and laptops vehicles intangible assets assets which have no physical existence cannot be seen or felt although they help to generate revenue in future and whose value is determined and restricted by the rights and expected future benefits that their possession confers upon the owner such as goodwill patents trademarks copyrights brand equity industrial designs and other intellectual property rights etc 
assets can also be classified into current assets and non current assets current assets assets which satisfies any of the following criteria a it is expected to be realized in or is intended for sale or consumption in the company's normal operating cycle b it is held primarily for the purpose of being traded c it is due to be realized within 12 months after the reporting date or d it is cash or cash equivalent unless it is restricted from being exchange or used to settle a liability for at least 12 months after the reporting date current asset includes inventory trade receivables including sundry debtors and bill receivables prepaid expenses current investments cash and cash equivalent short term loans and advances non current assets all other assets which are not classified as current assets are non current assets such as plant and machinery furniture and fittings land and building patent trademark copyright liability it is the present obligation to be settled through outflow of economic resources in other words it is the amount of money that the business owes to the other parties example when the goods are purchased on credit the entity will have an obligation to pay to the supplier the price of goods on an agreed future date or when a loan is taken from bank there is an obligation to pay interest and principal amount at a future specified date on the basis of period of holding liabilities or obligation can be further classified into long term non current liabilities and short term current liabilities current liabilities a liability which satisfies any of the following a it is expected to be settled in the normal operating cycle b it is held primarily for the purpose of being traded c it is due to be settled within 12 months after the reporting date or d the entity does not have an unconditional right to defer the settlement of the liability for at least 12 months after the reporting date note the terms of liability that put at the option of the counterparty results in its settlement by the issue of equity instruments do not affects its classification non current liability all other liabilities not classified as current liabilities shall be classified as non current liabilities such as debentures public deposits long term bank loan inter corporate loans long term loan from director internal liability it refers to the owners equity that is all the amounts which proprietors are entitled such as capital general reserve debenture redemption reserve undistributed profits etc working capital the assets which are held to maintain the flows of revenue from operation in the form of current assets such as cash required to pay for expenses or to the creditors inventories required to smoothen production and sale account receivables debtors and bill receivable to increase the sales cash at bank prepaid expenses the total of current asset constitute the working capital of the firm which is termed as gross working capital gross working capital is equal to total current assets is equal to long term internal liabilities plus long term debts plus current liabilities minus non current assets net working capital is the excess of current asset over current liabilities it is the amount of current assets that remain in a firm if all its current liabilities are paid 
this aspect of working capital is a more realistic concept working capital net current asset minus current liabilities receipts it is the gross inflow of cash and cash equivalent to the entity it can be further classified into revenue receipts these are the receipts which are occurred or received in the normal course of operations of the business like amount received through sale of goods and services in the ordinary course of business capital receipt these are the receipts which are received from other than principal business operations like proceeds from long term investments or sale of fixed assets expenses is it refers to the costs incurred the part of the expenditure whose benefit is already expired during the current accounting period by a business for earning revenue such as rent wages salaries interest depreciation carriage expenditure it is the amount of outflow of monetary resources or money or incurring a liability for acquiring any asset goods or services the expenditure can be further classified into three categories number 1 revenue expenditure it if the benefit of expenditure incurred is utilized within the accounting period in which they are incurred for example electricity insurance rent carriage interest salary etc number 2 capital expenditure if the benefit of expenditure is received or lasts for more than one accounting period for example construction of building purchase of machinery furniture etc number 3 deferred revenue expenditure these are the expenditure which are revenue in nature but their benefit is utilized over number of years for example huge advertisement expenditure preliminary expenses etc profit it is the amount by which revenues exceed their related expenses during an accounting period is called profit profit is equal to revenue minus expenses gain it is a profit of non recurring nature arising from events or transactions which are incidental to business but are not part of the principal revenue generating activities of a business enterprise such as sale of fixed assets at a value more than the written down value appreciation in the value of an investment or an asset etc loss the excess of expenses incurred during an accounting period over its related revenues loss is equal to expenses minus revenues goods the tangible items in which the business mainly deals in the ordinary course of business these are the items which are purchased for resale or for use as raw material in further productions and are not held or intended for use in the business for administration purposes purchases procurement of goods by a business for the purpose of resale or for using them as raw material in the further production for a trader of goods it refers to purchase of stock in trade and in case of manufacturing business it is purchase of raw materials and consumable supplies purchase may be further classified into cash and credit purchases purchase return when goods which are purchased are returned back to the supplier because they are not as per specification mentioned in the purchase order are defective or due to any other reason sales it is the amount of total revenue earned from customers through sale of goods or rendering of services in the normal course of business sale may further be classified into cash sales or credit sales sales return when the customer return the goods to the business entity due to any other reason which can be defect in the goods inappropriate quality lack of attributes as specified by the customer debtors 
it refers to the entities to whom the entity has sold goods or rendered services on credit and the amount is not completely paid and still to be received by the business entity these are considered assets of the business usually current assets creditors sundry creditors if the business buys goods or services from the suppliers on credit that is the amount is not paid to the suppliers at the time of purchase and payment is deferred to a mutually agreed specified date in future these are treated as financial obligations or liabilities for the entity trade payables under current liabilities which is to be paid usually within the norm normal operating cycle period bill receivable it is a bill of exchange whereby debtors to whom the goods are sold on credit of the business undertakes to pay a certain amount mentioned there in a specified date these are considered assets of the business usually current assets bills payable it is a bill of exchange where by the business undertakes to pay a certain amount mentioned therein on a specified date to suppliers from whom the goods are purchased on credit these are considered liabilities for the business usually current liabilities discount it is the amount of rebate given by the seller of goods or services to the purchaser it can be further classified into trade discount this discount is given to persuade or encourage the buyers to buy more quantity of goods it is given in the form of agreed percentage of list price at the time of sale of goods this discount is not recognized in the books of accounts as it is deducted in the invoice or cash memo and taxes like gst are imposed on after trade discount number 2 cash discount this discount is given to encourage the debtors to pay their dues before the expiry of agreed credit period this discount is recognized in the books of accounts as finance cost and charged to statement of profit and loss it is given as percentage of the dues account it refers to a summarized record of all the transactions relating to a particular head or accounting item at one place income income is a wider term then profit as it includes not only profit but also the gains which are non recurring in nature income refers to the increase in the net wealth of a business enterprise over an accounting period stock it is the amount of total goods raw material work in progress and finished goods available for sale on a particular date cost it refers to the amount of expenditures incurred the expired portion of benefits in manufacturing and processing organizations to produce finished goods for sale in the ordinary course of business voucher it is the documentary evidence of a transaction for example if goods are purchased for cash the supplier provides a cash memo if goods are purchased on credit the supplier issues an invoice when the payment is made to creditors receipt of payment is issued by the creditors 1.12 accounting principles concepts and conventions the first and the foremost objective of accounting is to provide general purpose financial information which is easily understandable appropriate relevant and reliable information about the results and position of the business to various users or stakeholders so that they can make sound and judicious financial and economic decisions for this accounting records are to be maintained on the basis of uniform standards rules and principles generally accepted accounting principles gap it is the collection of all the accounting principles policies concepts and conventions gap provides the base of accounting gap refers to the rules principles or guidelines with respect to the recognition valuation 
classification disclosures which are used for recording classifying summarizing and reporting of business and financial transactions and events so as to bring standardization consistency and comparability in the preparation and presentation of financial statements these principles are evolved and developed over a long period of time based on the accounting experiences of the accountants business customs and practices legal decisions economic environment etc these are generally accepted and followed by the accounting practitioners and professionals working over a large geographical area in preparation and presentation of financial statements 1.13 fundamental accounting assumptions following are the assumptions used by the default in preparation and presentation of the financial statement if these are followed and valid then entity is not required to give any disclosures disclosure is to be given only if any of the following assumption is invalid number 1 going concern assumption it is assumed that a business enterprise has an indefinite life or existence thus business will continue for long foreseeable period of time and there is neither any intention to liquidate nor to scale down its operations or any of the undertaking significantly implication and relevance number 1 distinction between capital expenditure and revenue expenditure can be made number 2 classification of both assets and liabilities into current and non current based on this assumption and definition of operating cycle depreciation is charged on property plant and equipment or fixed asset as on their acquisition they are capitalized in the balance sheet at the book value after deducting depreciation irrespective of their current market value prevailing in the market number 2 consistency assumptions as per this assumption accounting practices once selected and applied should be followed and applied consistently year after year if the accounting policies are followed consistently then it will ensure meaningful analysis and comparison of the financial position as well as performance of the same business for a number of years known as intra firm and inter period comparison it does not mean that practices and policies once adopted cannot be changed in future when a change is required and desirable as per the requirements of the changing circumstances it can be changed but proper disclosure as per the applicable accounting standard are given in the financial statements along with its effect in the statement of income profit or loss and balance sheet change in the value of asset or liability any accounting policy may be changed if required by the change in governing law reporting framework requirements or accounting standards applicable so as to make the financial information more relevant and transparent or to give better true and fair view of financial position and performance implication and relevance helps the management and other stakeholders of financial information in decision making by comparing the current years financial information with the information of previous years number 3 accrual assumption all revenues and related expenses are recorded or recognized as and when they are earned or incurred irrespective of whether the cash and cash equivalents are received or payment is made at the time of transaction or on a future date for example if the goods are sold on credit with the credit given for 2 months for rupees 2 lakh on 15th march 2023 and all the risk and rewards incidental to ownership are transferred to the buyer then the sale is to be recorded on 15th march 2023 and not on the date when cash is received after 2 months from the debtors in case of revenue expenses such as salary or rent if at the end of the accounting period 31st march salary for 4 months is due 
to the employees but not paid such unpaid salary will be recorded in the current year as a outstanding salary and the salary expense account will be debited and sell transferred to profit and loss statement for the year in which the salary is due it is not charged to profit and loss statement in the next year when it will be paid to the employees implication and relevance earning of revenue and consumption of a resource expenses can be accurately matched with each other relating to a particular accounting period providing the accurate measurement of financial performance 1.14 accounting principles and concepts number 1 business entity or separate legal entity a business entity has a separate existence from its owners and management according to this principle business is treated as a separate legal entity distinct from its owners and managers thus transactions are recorded and analyzed and accounting records and financial statements are prepared and presented from the viewpoint of business and not the owner or proprietor the proprietor or businessman is treated as an inside creditor internal liability for his investment made in the business equal to the amount of capital in the form of cash or other assets invested by him in the business interest on capital is treated as an expense if the private expenses of the owner are paid out of the business money then it is treated as drawings leading to reductions in the capital of the owner money measurement as per this concept only those transactions and events that can be measured or expressed in monetary terms are recorded and accounted for in the books of accounts of the business enterprise non monetary events like hiring of a loyal and intelligent employee death of an efficient employee strikes by the workers disputes with the customers etc are not recognized and recorded because they can not be quantified in terms of money even though they affect the operations of the business significantly limitations of money measurement concept number 1 it does not considers the qualitative aspect such as efficient and loyal human employee assets loyal and satisfied customers assets and dishonest and inefficient employees and workers liabilities strong and healthy relationship with the suppliers number 2 since the value of money currency is fluctuating on account of inflation to keep accounting records simple and understandable transaction and events are recorded using a fixed measurement unit therefore carrying value does not matches with the changes in the value of money over a period of time number 3 accounting period concept even though we assume the business as going concern but the users of financial information are interested in knowing the financial results at regular intervals therefore as per this concept the life of any business organization is split into smaller periods that is accounting period so that its performance can be evaluated and financial position can be determined at regular intervals of time accounting period refers to the interval of time at the end of which financial statements comprising profit and loss account or statement of profit and loss and the balance sheet with notes to accounts are prepared so that the financial performance can be measured and financial position can be determined at regular intervals and decisions such as shutdown continue expansion can be taken to control the affairs on timely basis accounting period is generally a period of 1 year starting from 1st april and ends on 31st march of next year relevance of the concept number 1 facilitates the classification of expenses into capital expenses and revenue expenses number 2 part of capital expenditure which is consumed during the current accounting period is charged to the statement of profit and loss and the remaining unconsumed 
portion is recognized as an expense in the balance sheet. Number three, compliance with the taxation laws. According to the income tax provisions, income tax is computed on annual basis. Number four, prompt corrective action can be taken by the management to improve the results and financials. Number four, full disclosure. As per this concept, besides applicable pro legal provisions, all material facts and information related to the economic activities of the entity should be properly disclosed in the financial statements and accompanying notes to the accounts as per the applicable financial reporting framework. The financial statements should act as a means of communicating and not escaping the material and relevant information. The objective of disclosure is to create better understanding and the users may be able to take sound financial decisions. For example, following disclosures can be provided in the footnotes such as number 1. Disclosure of contingent liabilities such as pending claims and litigations of a very big amount against the business arrears of dividend on cumulative preferentials, etc. Number two, change in the method of providing depreciation on fixed assets or property, plant and equipment. Number three, market value of investment in securities or and changes thereof. Number five, materiality principle. Materiality is not defined in exact monetary limits but any item which influences the economic decisions of the users is considered as material. Disclosure of all the material transactions and information is necessary, but it does not mean that even figures of big amount which are irrelevant are to be mandatorily disclosed in the financial statements. Therefore, items having insignificant effect or which are irrelevant to the users is not required to be disclosed separately. It may be merged with other items. Materiality is a subjective item as an item may be material for one enterprise, may not be material for another enterprise. Example, an item of expense of rupees 50,000 may be immaterial for an organization having a turnover of rupees 10,000 crores but it may be material for an enterprise having a turnover of just rupees 10 lakh. Number 6. Prudence or conservatism principle. As per this principle, prospective or anticipated future profit should not be recognized or recorded but all the future prospective losses should be immediately be recorded by making a provision for them. The aim of this principle is to protect overstatement of profit and depiction of a realistic financial picture of the organization. Where different alternative methods or policies of accounting on a particular subject matter or transaction are available, then the alternative having the least favorable effect on profit should be adopted in formulating and selecting accounting policies. For example, number one, stock should be valued at lower of cost or net realizable value as per accounting standard two. Number two, provision should be made for future liabilities or expenses such as provision for doubtful debts and provision for taxation. Number seven, cost principle. The major concern is that at what value fixed assets should be recorded. As per this principle, fixed assets are recorded in the books of accounts at its original cost consisting of cost of acquisition or purchase cost and all the expenditure incurred for making the assets ready to use and bringing the asset to present location and condition such as freight, carriage, installation, commission on the purchase of fixed assets. For example, a machinery is purchased for Rs. 4,50,000 and Rs. 60,000 
was spent on the installation of machine and rupees 50000 is paid as purchase commission then machine is recorded at rupees 560000 rupees in the books of accounts and depreciation will be charged on this amount if the market value of the machine in the relevant market increases to rupees 6 lakh due to price fluctuation then the increased value due to market fluctuation will not be accounted for in the books of accounts this cost of rupees 5 lakh 60 thousand is systematically reduced year after year by charging depreciation in the income statement and the assets are shown in the balance sheet at carrying value or book value that is cost minus accumulated depreciation number eight matching principle accounting information is relevant if it provides true and accurate picture of financial performance therefore as per this matching concept all expenses incurred by an enterprise during an accounting period are matched with the related incomes or revenues recognized during the same accounting period it facilitates the accurate calculation of profit earned or loss incurred in a particular accounting period the following accounting treatment are done due to matching principle number one calculation of prepaid expenses and recording them as assets number two determination of income received in advance from the customers as liabilities number three determination of closing stock at the end of the accounting period to reduce it from the cost of goods sold. Number four, depreciation charge on fixed assets or property, plant, and equipment in a systematic manner as per their use in the business in earning revenue. Number nine, dual aspect principle. Every business transaction has two aspects a debit and a credit of equal amount. In other words, for every debit in an account, there is a credit of equal amount in one or more accounts and vice versa. This system of accounting is also known as double entry system. This concept ensures that the two sides of the balance sheet that is assets which is application of funds side and equity and liability which shows the sources of funds side always match and thereby following accounting equation will always holds true at any point of time. Accounting equation is expressed as follows. Assets is equal to liabilities plus capital. For example, Sohan started business with cash rupees 5 lakh. This transaction increases cash in asset side and capital in liabilities side by rupees 5 lakh. Asset cash rupees 5 lakh is equal to liabilities 0 plus capital rupees 5 lakh. 1.15 basis of accounting there are two bases of recording transactions and ascertaining profit or loss during the accounting period number one cash basis number two accrual basis cash basis of accounting as per this basis transactions are recorded in the books of accounts by passing journal entries only on the receipt or payment of cash and cash equivalent the profit is calculated as the excess of actual cash receipts from the sale of goods, services, other non-operating income over actual cash payments or outflow of cash and cash equivalent for purchase of goods, wages, expenses such as rent, electricity, salaries, interest, etc. Transactions like credit sale and credit purchase are not accounted for in the books of accounts. No transaction is recorded when a payment or receipt is merely due, that is outstanding expenses, accrued incomes are not recognized. This method is in contravention to the matching principle. Accrual basis of accounting. As per this accrual basis, revenue and expenses are recorded as and when they are incurred or earned. Income is recorded as income when it is accrued. When the transaction takes place, risk and reward incidental to the ownership are transferred and obligations are performed. Irrespective of whether corresponding cash and cash equivalent are received or not. 
Similarly, expenses are recorded when they are incurred or become due. That is, when the benefit of resource or facility is expired and not when the cash is paid for them. Items such as outstanding expenses, prepaid expenses, accrued income, income received in advance are identified and taken into account as assets and liabilities. As per Companies Act 2013, all companies are required to maintain their accounts on accrual basis of accounting. So, this is the difference between accrual basis of accounting and cash basis of accounting. On the basis of nature of transactions, in accrual basis of accounting, both cash and credit transactions are recorded. In cash basis, only cash transactions are recorded. On the basis of assessment of profit or loss, accrual basis, profit or loss is ascertained correctly due to complete record of transactions. In cash basis, correct profit or loss is not ascertained because it records only cash transactions. On the basis of capital versus revenue items, in accrual basis, it makes a clear distinction between capital and revenue items. Cash basis does not make a distinction between capital and revenue items. On the basis of legal recognition, accrual basis is recognized under Companies Act Cash basis is not recognized under Companies Act. 1.16 Accounting Standards The accounting principles or GAAP, generally accepted accounting principles, have been developed in the form of concepts and conventions to bring comparability and uniformity in preparation and presentation of financial statements. However, they allow alternative accounting treatments for the same items. Different organizations may adopt different accounting policies depending upon their requirements, industry, scale of operations for the same transactions or entity may follow different accounting policies for different accounting periods. As a result, the financial statement becomes inconsistent and incomparable. So it was felt to prescribe minimum accounting standards which are universally applicable so that the accounting statements possess qualitative characteristics of reliability, relevance, understandability, and comparability. International Accounting Standard Committee, IASC, was set up in 1973 as a non-profit international organization to improve the financial reporting throughout the world. Now, it is International Accounting Standard Board, IASB. The Institute of Chartered Accountant of India, ICAI, and the Institute of Cost and Management Accountants of India are also member of this board. ICAI set up the Accounting Standard Board in 1977 to identify the areas in which accounting standards are to be developed. ASB prepares and submits a draft accounting standard. The Council of ICAI issues the draft AS for the comments by the government, industry, academicians, and professionals, etc. After due consideration on the comments received, the Council of ICAI notifies it for its use in the financial statement. Accounting standards are written statements issued by autonomous professional accounting bodies such as FASB, IASB, ICAI, etc. Specifying standardized rules and practices for preparing and presenting the financial statements. 1.17 Objectives of Accounting Standards Accounting standards are formulated and issued with the following objectives. Number 1. To ensure uniformity and consistency in selection and application of accounting practices and policies in preparation and presentation of financial statements by proposing standard accounting treatment. Number two, to improve reliability of financial information. Since the accounting standard are of high quality and receive large scale acceptance, which create a sense of confidence and reliance among the users. Number three, to safeguard assets, prevent frauds and manipulations by codifying the accounting policies, methods and practices 
which limits the scope of fraud and manipulation. Number four, to facilitate auditors. It helps auditors by providing standardized accounting procedure to audit the books of accounts. 1.18 International Financial Reporting Standards IFRS refers to the Accounting and Financial Reporting Standards issued by International Accounting Standard Board IASB London. These standards are made to improve the financial reporting at the international level to help users throughout the world to gain better understanding of financial statements. Financial statements under IFRS framework following financial statements are prepared and presented under IFRS framework. Number one, statement of financial position. Balance sheet which includes the following components, assets, liabilities, equity, shareholders fund. Number two, comprehensive income statement including other comprehensive income which includes the following components, revenue, expenses. Number three, Statement of changes in equity showing transactions with the shareholders and change in their claim over the entity. Number four, statement of cash flow showing inflow and outflow of cash and cash equivalent from operating, investing and financing activities. Number five, notes to accounts and significant accounting policies showing the details of line items in the balance sheet and statement of comprehensive income. Significant differences between IFRS International Financial Reporting Standards issued by IASB and AS Accounting Standards issued by the ICAI. Number one, IFRS are principle based. They consider the substance over legal form in the transaction while AS are rule based. They require inflexible accounting procedures to be followed based on legal form. Number two, IFRS are based on fair value in that they require valuations should be based on fair value measures which ensure two realistic valuations while AS are based on historical cost in that they require asset should be recognized initially at their historical cost. 1.19 Summary Accounting is a logical and systematic process of identifying, collecting, recording, classifying, summarizing, interpretation and communicating financial information to the interested user. Objectives of Accounting Keeping structured, systematic, accurate and complete records of business transactions and events. Ascertain the profit earned or loss incurred. Ascertain the financial position. Provide useful accounting information to users. Provide financial information to the management, safeguard assets and detect and prevent frauds. Limitations of accounting. Historical in nature ignores qualitative aspects, scope for window dressing, subject to personal bias and judgment, based on concepts and conventions, subfields or branches of accounting, financial accounting, cost accounting, management accounting. Interested users of accounting information. In internal comes owners, management, employees in external users potential investors creditors suppliers lenders tax authorities others qualitative characteristics of accounting information reliability relevance understandability comparability accounting principles concepts and conventions gap refers to the rules principles or guidelines with respect to recognition valuation classification disclosures which are used for recording classifying summarizing and reporting of business and financial transactions and events so as to bring standardization consistency comparability in the preparation and presentation of financial statements fundamental accounting assumptions going concern assumption it is assumed that business will continue for long foreseeable period of time and there is neither any intention to liquidate nor to scale down its operations or any of the undertakings significantly. Consistency assumption. Accounting practices once selected and applied should be followed and applied consistently year after year. Accrual assumption. All revenues and related expenses are recorded or recognized as and when they are earned or incurred irrespective of whether the cash and cash equivalent are received 
or payment is made at the time of transaction or on a future date. Accounting concepts. Business entity or separate legal entity. A business entity is treated as a separate legal entity distinct from its owners and managers. Money measurement. Only those transactions and events that can be measured or expressed in monetary terms are recorded and accounted for in the books of accounts of the business enterprise. Accounting period concept. The life of any business organization is split into smaller parts or periods known as accounting period so that its performance can be evaluated and financial position can be determined at regular intervals of time. Full disclosure. All material facts and information related to the economic activities of the entity should be properly disclosed in the financial statements and the accompanying notes to the accounts. Materiality principle. Disclosure of all the material transactions and information is necessary but it does not mean that even figures of big amount which are irrelevant are to be mandatorily disclosed in the financial statements. Prudence or conservatism principle. Prospective and or anticipated future profit should not be recognized or recorded, but all future prospective losses should be immediately be recorded by making a provision for them. Cost principle. Fixed assets are recorded in the books of accounts at its original cost consisting of cost of acquisition, purchase cost, and all the expenditure incurred for making the assets ready to use and bringing the asset to present location and condition. Matching principle. All expenses incurred by an enterprise during an accounting period are matched with the related incomes or revenues recognized during the same accounting period. Dual aspect principle. Every business transaction has two aspects, a debit and a credit of equal amount. For every debit in an account, there is a credit of equal amount in one or more accounts or and vice versa. Thanks for listening the lesson.